way to Kansas, we realized that 35 actually turns into a toll road. We weren't really sure how to do this, so we luckily followed the semi in front of us. It was as simple as grabbing our ticket. So, we'll keep you updated on how this goes. And you know what? It wasn't that hard. In Arizona, we don't have toll roads. Our roads are equally crappy. So, and actually they're not crappy at all. We have a really, apparently a good system. So, we are paying our toll. Hello, do you need this? And that's how you pay a successful toll. Beginning to end. It's, it's hard work. So maybe watching us pay tolls is kind of boring for some people, but if you've never paid a toll before, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. And there we go. Now, onward and upward. Oh, I gotta navigate. Ah! I am the worst navigator on the planet. Yes. I have a friend named Jessica who will um, also sign off if that's true. We were just going through Oklahoma City to get on, to go from 35 to 40, and I was trying to say like, get you can get over a lane or stay in this lane, like, but get over in the lane because I saw a car coming, and I said get way over there. Shenington said, "Oh, we need to get way over there. It's a five-lane freeway at the time, and we actually just need to stay in the lane we were at. So I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this massive beast five lanes over in the next 20 yards, which wasn't going to happen." And we're 60 feet, so it wasn't really gonna work. But everything's fine. Now we're on this, uh, we're on the 40, I 40 now, and we're gonna be on here for 150 miles. So I said, you don't have to worry about my navigating for 150 miles. So there's that. On long days on the road, there's lots of things that we like to do to keep ourselves busy. The first one is obviously my navigating skills, which keeps us on our toes and maybe a little upset with one another. I also enjoy writing blogs. And I like to do reviews until I start to get a little bit of motion sickness. But one of the things we both really enjoy is audiobooks. Green cast shadows falling on his scarred face. I read his reaction to whatever clue he found. Of having an RV when you're pulling a car, or just having a very large RV, is getting gas. Um, you go to these truck stops and they only do diesel, so if you don't do diesel, you have to try to make it work in another capacity and it's a constant, constant pain in the butt. So I pulled in two different ways, it didn't work. I'm having to pull out, pull in, and Bethany is holding down the gas, um, I guess the spot, the parking spot to get gas. She's trying to hold it down for us so we can, um, we can get it before someone else hops in there and steals our, our thunder. When you're a car, you don't think about all the things that you have to think about when you're an RV towing a vehicle behind you getting gas. We try to always get one of the end gas pumps because it makes it a lot easier to pull in and out. We have to make sure we have room to turn everything and to turn out. Scott has had some experience with this, but there are times that we have to pull out of a gas station and pick another one. Or maybe we get there and we are figuring out the whole time that we pump how to get out. The longer you do it, the easier it is, that's true, but it is something that didn't really cross our mind as much. The height is not really the issue. It's normally the width of turning. After our next stop, um, we are about to go park, and then we found a Chipotle and only a couple miles down the road, and that's what Jaden's been craving, so we're gonna go to Chipotle for lunch, and then we will unpack and get everything settled. But first things first, get us parked, get us food. are at the Museum of World Treasure, so they have all kinds of exhibits, all kinds of information. They have dinosaur bones, that's probably the thing we're most excited about. So let's see what else they have. So we are at the Museum of World Treasures and Stephanie's actually going to be giving us a highlight tour, so we're very excited. Stephanie did a great job of giving us a tour. She knows this museum like the back of her hand. She loves it and she actually wants to go into museum curation herself. She explained to us that the museum was started by a doctor who lives in the area, and he just was a collector to start. So he would collect all different types of items, and then he'd keep them in his basement. He'd invite people over for parties, he'd pull out the stuff in his basement, and people would just go look at it. Then in the 90s, there was a big flood, and his wife said, 
honey, it is time to put this stuff somewhere safer. We need to make sure that other people can enjoy this as well. That's when they found the old building in Wichita, Kansas. The amount of things this museum has is unreal. They have a piece of the Berlin Wall. They have dinosaurs. They have stuff from the Roman Empire. They have stuff from all the wars. They have information on all the presidents. They have stuff you would never expect. They also have Ivan the Dinosaur, who's the biggest attraction there. Ha ha. And one of my favorite things they had was General Custard's underwear. And if you go to our Instagram at Full Time Humans, you're going to see a picture of those. They have stuff in their museum from Edgar Allan Poe, Robert Frost, and even stuff from Beethoven. It is remarkable the amount of items in this small space. There were things in here we never thought we would see, like shrunken heads. I can't tell you how many times Scott and I would find each other and be like, did you see this? And did you see this? And I can't believe they had that. This is a museum in Wichita, Kansas. We never thought that we would have the experience here that we did. If you're ever in the area, make the drive. And believe me, you will leave a changed person. And definitely ask for Stephanie to give you the highlight tour because not only is she knowledgeable, she's super fun. These are our two leading ladies. Um, this is Baca and then that is braided hair lady. Um, they're about 3,000 years old and they do not have any kind of um, royal significance to them. If they did, they would be back over in Egypt because they're very strict about that. birthday now. It looks like birthday cake to you. But look, see they take that and then they make a mold of it and then when they're done they can have another one. And it's called a cast. I eat it once. Um, apparently he thinks the cast is birthday cake and he keeps asking when he gets to eat it. So, whatever. 